Hello everyone, my name is Kofi Akamani. I am an associate professor in the Department of Forestry at Southern Illinois University, Carbondale, Illinois, USA. Welcome to my presentation with title Using a Mixed Methods Approach to Assess the Impacts of Co-Management on Community and Household Resilience in Ghana. The motivation for the study was to develop and test a framework for understanding the process and outcomes of community adaptation to drivers of change. In recent decades, the outdated view that humans are separate from and in control of nature is giving way to an alternative perspective that emphasizes the dynamic interdependence between humans and nature. In view of these changing paradigms, the concept of community resilience is increasingly used to describe the collective ability of community members to respond to drivers of change in a manner that improves upon or maintains their well-being. However, conceptual models for understanding the process of adaptation have not been fully developed. Importantly, indicators for assessing community resilience are also poorly developed. To address these knowledge gaps, we developed a theoretical model using the theory of social ecological resilience and the interactional community theory. Social ecological resilience often refers to the capacity of a system to absorb disturbances while retaining its structures and functions, or the capacity to create an entirely new system when the existing situation becomes undesirable. This capacity is often thought to be a function of the existing institutions and resources in the system. And yet, the social processes by which these institutions and resources are mobilized uh, have not been adequately studied in the resilience literature. And so we address this issue using the interactional community theory. Uh, this theory focuses on the analysis of the community field the arena of social interaction through which community members address their common concerns. And yet, this theory too does not pay attention to the structural constraints that shape uh, the emergence of the community. And so the synthesis of the two gave us a combination of the structures and the processes that influence community adaptation to drivers of change. And so this model was based on the synthesis of these two perspectives. The community is part of a multi-level world and is influenced by multiple drivers of change. Communities have capital assets and institutions and differential access to these assets and institutions influence adaptation strategies and their outcomes, which might be positive or negative. At the household level, we developed hypotheses based on this framework. Uh, looking at the predictors of participation in forest policy and the outcomes associated with it. To test the proposed model, we chose the Collaborative Forest Management Program in Ghana as the driver of change. Data were collected from two communities in the southern part of Ghana, and the analysis was conducted at the community and household levels. Collaborative forest management has been implemented in Ghana since the adoption of the Forest and Wildlife Policy of 1994. And this program emphasizes the involvement of local communities in forest decision making and benefit sharing. However, the impact of the program on the resilience of forest dependent communities has not been adequately explored. And so we sought to ask how did communities respond to the implementation of the co-management program? How has it affected community capitals? And at the household level, we're interested in the determinants of household participation and the outcomes associated with it. We used a sequential exploratory mixed methods design. In the first phase of the study, we generated qualitative data through interviews and the review of documents to understand the process and outcomes of community adaptation to the change in forest policy. In the second phase of the study, we administered a structured questionnaire to gather data on the determinants and resilience outcomes of household participation 
in the collaborative forest management program and the data were analyzed using factor analysis, multiple regression, and t-tests. These two data sets were then integrated in the final stage of the study. The results show that before the forest policy, both communities lacked the capital assets and institutions that make communities resilient or adaptive. And so when the programs were introduced, community members benefited a lot from the help of external organizations, although local and traditional institutions played a role as well as key individuals. In both communities, forest organizations were first established followed by the implementation of agroforestry projects. The impacts of these programs were varied across the community capital assets. Human capital, for instance, was frequently mentioned by community members. Uh, food supplies had increased because of participation in the agroforestry projects and community members had also gained knowledge on forest management. Fiscal capital was also mentioned. Communities that community members had gained income from uh, the agroforestry projects and they were able to use these to construct new houses uh, and also to access uh, social services outside the community like healthcare and education. Although community infrastructure like roads and schools and other facilities have not been provided. Similar patterns were observed in the other types of capital assets where both positive and negative outcomes were reported. At the household level, we collected quantitative data on 30 resilience indicators and the results of the factor analysis showed that the scale contained four factors each of which had a high internal consistency reliability. We also included four single items for further analysis. The results of the regression analysis showed that household connectedness to forest organizations had a significant positive effect on participation in the CFM program. However, only bonding social capital had a significant positive effect on household participation. With regard to the outcomes, participation in the CFM program had a significant positive effect only on household nutrition levels, which was a measure of human capital. However, each of the types of past levels of capitals had a significant positive effect on current levels of capitals, suggesting that the past seems to predict the present in spite of participation in the CFM program. The results of t-tests comparing past household conditions with current household conditions showed significant declines in all types of capital assets in Kwapenin, with the exception of levels of nutrition, income, and bonding social capital. The case of Chirayaso was, however, a bit mixed, but there were still significant declines in economic capital and nutrition over the period. One of the key findings of this study is that resilience is path dependent. Access to capital assets and institutions prior to the collaborative forest management program influenced how actors responded and the resilience outcomes associated with it. Another key finding is that resilience is skill sensitive. Whereas key informers perceived that the overall impact of the program had been moderately positive, Household level analysis revealed more adaptive outcomes across the two communities. The third key finding is that resilience is multidimensional and collaborative forest management appears to have differential impacts on the multiple dimensions of community resilience. To conclude, the results of this study highlight the need for forest policy to embrace complexity and to adopt a more integrated approach to enhancing the resilience of forest-dependent communities. With regard to research, the results also highlight the need for further refinement of the methodological tools and conceptual frameworks for understanding and assessing community resilience across skills.